Good morning, I'm Bill Surratt with the Vicksburg Convention and Visitors Bureau and we're about to start a journey around Vicksburg and look at some of the historic properties here. We're starting today at the Corners Mansion in the Garden District. The house was built around 1873. They've just put a fresh coat of paint on the front step, so we're going to go back around to the patio and then go in and visit the homeowner for a little while. Hi, I'm Macy Whitney. Welcome to the Corners Mansion Inn in Vicksburg, Mississippi. This is our dining room, and I'm, I'm not sure what that dining room looked like when the house was built. Um, this room was renovated in the 1960s by a doctor, Ivy, and his wife, who bought this house in 1959. And they put $50,000 into this house fixing it up, and they paneled this room. So the panel over the fireplace is the, uh, from a French chateau's music salon, and it dates from Louis XVI time period. But they put the lights in and the display cabinets. And this is where we serve breakfast with our guests in the morning. Um, my parents bought this house from Dr. Ivy and his wife Susan in 1985 when they were driving through Vicksburg and uh, stayed next door at Cedar Grove and by accident they just bought this house the next day just because my mother liked it. And they made it a bed and breakfast and, and uh, added 11 guest rooms to this house and furnished the entire house. There was no furniture in the house. Um, this is our antiquities cabinet. Every time you stick a shovel in the ground around here, you find something. And my dad was digging the gallery's foundation, which is up behind the servants' quarters, and they stopped the back cooperator and pulled this out of the ground. It's a 10-pound Union parrot shell. And dad took it down to the corner drugstore, and the Joe Jarash, Dr. Joe, I call him, drilled a hole in the bottom and dumped the gunpowder out of it and disarmed it. But I think it was uh, probably the detonator fell off or something, so it was a dud. But it weighs all up to 10 pounds. And these are all Beaten Heart Candy Company Coca-Cola bottles. All different sizes and shapes of Coca bottles. This one doesn't even, this one looks like the first Coca-Cola bottle. The Beaten Hearts were the first to bottle Coca-Cola here. And they used this seal that sealed the carbon dioxide in the bottle and kept it bubbly in the bottle. But to open it, you had to pop it. And that wire would drop down into the Coke and it would be bubbly in the bottle. So that's probably why they call it soda, soda pop, because you had to pop it to get it to open. Everybody calls it pop. Of course, in the South, they just call it Coke. Everything's Coke. But yeah, this is my cabinet of all the things we found in the ground. Yeah, this is a popular room for our wedding venues, dinners and luncheons and showers and different events, reunions, dinners for the families, uh, rehearsal dinners and weddings uh, inside or out. Our gardens in the rear are, are beautiful for a wedding. With the steps going up, the brides like to come down those steps. And it uh, makes for a very um, intimate event. And I think people would enjoy coming here and feeling at home and staying here for the weekend while their, their loved ones get married. So it's a lot of fun. So this is the master bedroom suite. It's actually a two bedroom suite, so it makes a great uh, room for a family or people that are good friends traveling with one another because they can stay in these two bedrooms. This bed is uh, 1840. We think it may be a Charles Lee. Um, it looks very much like one of his beds. He was a black furniture maker from the 1850s. It was a free man from Boston and he um, actually studied under Millard, and I'm, I'm not sure whether this is a Lee or not. My mother went to New Orleans to buy this bed at an auction, and the wardrobe that went with it sold for $20,000. Well, she didn't buy the, bed, the wardrobe, but the bed came up on the block, and the first bid was telephoned in at $2,000. Mom bid $2,100 and closed her eyes and put a whammy on the room, and she said for no one to say anything, and no one did, so she got the bed. So it's a very old bed, but um, I love the fruit theme on the head on the headboard. And the columns are hollow because I guess they would have stored their jewels or whatever in here, so they wouldn't they, they, they wouldn't be found during the during the war. And then the painting over the mantel is uh, my antiques roadshow question that says Mrs. Timothy and her children, 1860, on the back of it. But if you look at the kid in the bottom left hand corner, if you look at the ad over there. That's the the ad for the British pair soap. It's the same kid. So I googled him. He became an admiral in the British Navy. He could never escape his childhood nickname. He was always known as Admiral Bubbles because he's throwing bubbles. 
<laughs> but the, the view from the front of our house, and I guess we can go look out there, is um, spectacular. And I think yeah, we'll talk about the, um, the architecture of our house, which is classic Greek revival with some Italianate theme. <laughs> Let's go outside. This is the view from our house. We see the Mississippi River out there in the distance. And then there's the Yazzie River Diversion Canal down at the bottom of the hill. But back in the Civil War, this, the river here in Vicksburg used to make a hairpin turn and it changed course in 1876. And if you look out over the, our land over there, we have a rose garden and the cottage, but about the elevation of the roof of the cottage, there's Lake Centennial, which was formed in the centennial year of 1876. But this house was built as a wedding present for Susan and Isaac, so the columns are called Vicksburg Pierced Columns, and they're signs of love and marriage, the hearts and the rings and the shamrocks. And the front fence is cast iron, and it has shamrocks and rings in it, and it probably came down the Mississippi River from Ohio, on the Ohio River from Pittsburgh. And um, the front gate says Bonham on one leaf in 1873 on the other, because this house was built by John Klein for his daughter Susan as a wedding present. Nice wedding present, Daddy. The front pathways are called French Creole Parterre Gardens, and there's rings and diamond patterns even in the brick pathways. We've been restoring our gardens to the original, what we think was the brick, the uh, brick pathways, and the di the diamond pattern, and the re and the rings and the pathways are all uh, French Creole Parterre Gardens, and their original the original brick pathways. So we're proud of that that we have the original pathways. might want to get a shot of the original signature brick of the guy that built this house. It's so deeply engraved it had to be carved in the wet brick. You can see that it is pointing north. But it looks like I, Y, Y, Y. I was wondering if there were any other houses in Vicksburg that may have the same signature, that would be the same builder, but you know, maybe as, the, as you all go and do the filming of all these homes, you might find another brick and you can let me know <laughs> if there's another one that exists here in Vicksburg. But we are in the National Register because of our pathways and gardens um, which are being restored and that's another, uh, makes another lovely setting for weddings as well. And so this is the map of the world that I, I got when I first moved here because I had people from Kazakhstan. I'm like, where's Kazakhstan? So it's right there and we had somebody from there. We had some people from Africa, lots of people from uh, China. Uh, Australia, lots of Australians, but Europe is, we have so many Europeans from Germany, Holland, Holland had the clocks, their clocks as they say. One of the girls uh, from France, from Austria, Australia, Austria put this euro, this 10 euro on there. I said that's about 15 bucks, I could go take that and go to lunch. <laughs> but it's fine, it's kind of developed its own little character from all the, the people from all over the world. And I'm thinking, where else can you live in a little town like Vicksburg, Mississippi, and have people from all over the place come and stay here? It's a, a very odd. I think the Europeans, a lot of them are on the music trail from, from that, um, Memphis down to New Orleans or vice versa. And um, a lot of people come here to see the military park. So that's uh, primarily history-driven um, tourism, it seems. Macy, thank you for letting us come in today. Your house is beautiful. How many guest rooms do you have here? 16. 16 rooms, so you can handle a big group, a big wedding. We can sleep 38 people. That's great. Well, again, thank you for letting us come visit the Corners. It's a beautiful house, and you do thank a grand you. job. Thank you for everything. Sure. Nice to have you. Our next stop on our tour of homes is Bell of the Bends. It was built in 1876. It is a splendid example of Italianate architecture. Come on in, and let's take a look around. Good morning. Hi, Bill. How are you? Doing great. I'd like to introduce you to Mary Lee. She's the owner of Bell of the Bends, and she's going to give us a quick look at, at her home. Great. Come on in. <laughs> Your home 
home is beautiful. The, the plaster work, everything about it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your house and take Thank us on you. a walk around? All right. Um, our home was built in 1876 by Murray Smith and Kate Smith. Um, Murray was a Mississippi State Senator. His wife, Kate, was a native Vicksburger, and her family owned the ice business here in Vicksburg. Our home is Italianate in architecture. Um, there's a lot of features that distinguish it as Italianate. Um, we have double bay windows. We have uh, brick eyebrows above the windows exteriorly that are decorative, um, double verandas. All of these things make this uh, beautiful home an Italianate structure. Uh, we are a bed and breakfast in Vicksburg. We have been here uh, running and owning the inn for 10 years. Um, we have been ranked Vicksburg's number one bed and breakfast for nine of those 10 years. Um, and we have four guest rooms and we include a full breakfast every morning. Um, why don't we take a stroll through the, the parlor and the dining room and I'll tell you a little bit about what we have in these rooms. Thank you. <laughs> we, we are in the uh, what would be the original ladies parlor. This is where the ladies would come and play the piano and do needlepoint and things like that. Um, some beautiful features of this room are the uh, crown moldings. Um, the wood molding is cypress. The intricate molding in between is Bavarian plaster. This uh, plaster work was done by a group of Europeans who came to Vicksburg in the 1830s. Um, that is who did all of this plaster work and it is all original to the house. Uh, the woodwork and trim around the windows and doors, it is cypress wood. Um, and this design is unique to our home. And by that I mean the oval arched woodwork. It's very, very unique and very, very beautiful. The piano in the corner here, this is a play L piano. This piano was built in approximately 1830. This piano was put on a boat and came up the river from New Orleans and was placed in our home. This is an original piece to our home. It was Murray's wedding gift to Kate. I'm very, very fortunate to have this piece. Um, the picture frame all above the piano is also original to the home. We have four chandeliers in our home that are original and one of them is right here in this parlor. These chandeliers were from France and um, they're very, very, very valuable. Uh, we can head to the dining room. This is our dining room and this is where we serve breakfast each morning at 9 o'clock. Um, we do communal dining, we all eat at one time and it's a really great time to have everybody get to know one another. Um, the, uh, the china on the table is uh, from England, it's made by Royal Albert. The crystal is Irish crystal, that's very important to me, my last name is Ahern, so it's, it's, it's uh, good for us to have Irish representation at this dining room table. All right, this is the grand foyer. Um, this was the first room that anybody saw when they entered our home, and oftentimes this was as far as they were able to get. There's a lot of adornments in this room. Um, the wood molding, the plaster molding, the metal molding below, all of the other molding is gold leaf. Very, very beautiful. Um, this is a post-bellum home, so this home was not here during the Civil War. Um, if it had been, all of this molding would have been stripped and gone. Um, there's a very good chance that this house would not be here had it been antebellum, but we're glad that it's still here. Um, the grand staircase is very, very beautiful. Uh, the uh, banister is black walnut. The newel post is also black walnut with inlaid strips of burled walnut. This uh, newel post is original to the house and has never been restored, retouched, refinished. This is in its original state. Um, our ceilings are 13 feet 6 inches which is very, very high, which makes for a very long and very elegant staircase. Okay. Welcome to the Azalea Room. This is one of our bed and breakfast rooms. This room was the original gentleman's parlor. Um, this entire bedroom set is original to the house. Uh, it is black walnut and it is Eastlake in its styling. The bed, this is called a half teaster canopy bed. Uh, all of our bed and breakfast rooms do uh, have their own private bath, and each of our rooms does have its own central heat and air unit. We're going to head upstairs and go outside on our beautiful verandas that uh, have beautiful views of the Mississippi River and uh, the beautiful Mississippi Delta.
Well, welcome to the second floor veranda. Um, this is uh, one of the most popular spots in our entire home for our bed and breakfast guests. We have wicker porch swings. Um, this porch swing right here offers probably the best view of a sunset over the Mississippi River that you will ever find. Um, our courtyard, the, uh, the formal parterre garden, uh, that is housed around a brick foundation and that brick foundation was the foundation to the original kitchen. Uh, the original kitchen burned down. I don't know what year that happened, but uh, typically in, in historic homes like this, the kitchen was always built separately for two reasons. They were um, very hot in the summertime and there was a greater risk of them burning down, so um, that's why it was built separately. All of the bricks that are used uh, in our courtyard and around the perimeter of our home as far as the walkways, they are all original. And all of the bricks that were used for the pathways, the gardens, and the house were produced right here on our property. Well, welcome to my private porch swing on the veranda. Um, when I sit up here, I see everything that is unique to Mississippi. I see a river, I see um, an antebellum home, I see a white church steeple, I see a historic um, kitchen that was built in 1876. Everything that is Mississippi, I can see right here from this porch swing. The Josephine Room holds very uh, specific significance for us. Um, we purchased the home from Josephine Pratt, and uh, this was the room that Josephine lived in while she owned Belle of the Bends. And um, after she moved, we wanted to thank her and wanted to honor her. So we decided to change the name of this room to her name, the Josephine. It is absolutely magnificent. Um, has a very beautiful pri private bath with marble sinks and very, very lovely. And we would love to have you come and stay and let us spoil you in this beautiful, beautiful room. We are standing in the beautiful gardens of uh, Belle of the Bends. And I just wanted to point out this magnificent crepe myrtle tree that is original to our, our yard. Um, it's about 172 years old. And when it blooms in late June and early July, it's a very beautiful pink and it makes the whole backyard glow in this gorgeous pink color. Um, the statue behind me, this statue is also original to the gardens here. Um, the statues are called the Four Seasons. And in Victorian times, you would put one statue on each corner of your property and they were to bring you good luck. Well, Mary, thank you for taking us on this tour of Bell the Bends. We've really enjoyed it. What better place in Vicksburg than to sit on this porch and take a look across the Louisiana River bottom? And you just got a spectacular home. We thank you for your time today. Well, Bill, it's certainly been my pleasure. And uh, just love showing my house off. It's very beautiful, very unique, and very Mississippi. It, it certainly is. Thank you. <laughs> thank nice you very much. You. Bye. Bye-bye. As our tour continues, we're in one of Vicksburg's oldest neighborhoods. In fact, we're standing in front of the second oldest residential structure in the city, the Governor McNutt House, which was built in about 1863. Come on in, let's meet the owner and take a look around. Good afternoon, Elvin. How are you doing? I'm doing well. We'd like to take a look at your house. We're uh, TV. By all means, come on Pittsburgh in. Pittsburgh TV, and we'd like to take a look at this historic property. My name is Elvin McFerrin, and welcome to the McNutt House. Elvin, thank you for letting us be here today. I know you've got a lot of projects going on keeping this big old house open, but we wanted to take just a few minutes to take a look inside, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about the rooms that we're seeing here, the dining room and the formal parlor. Sure. Uh, the original structure, construction began in 1825, the same year the city of Vicksburg was founded, but it just consisted of these two rooms downstairs and the two that are overhead. Alexander McNutt moved into the house in 1829, and when he did, he marbleized fireplaces and added on to the house. Tell us a little bit about Governor McNutt and his importance to Vicksburg and the importance of the house. Sure. Well, McNutt moved into this house in 1829 and uh, became a state legislator and ultimately ran for governor. 
and he won that election. Uh, during his term as governor, he signed two or three pieces of key legislation. One had to do with women's rights. He was the first to sign a bill that permitted women to own property in the United States. And that had a great influence on the development of Vicksburg, did it not? Because it really a lot of, of wealthy women moved to Vicksburg so they could retain their wealth. That's true. In fact, um, Mississippi, preceding the Civil War, was considered to be one of the richest states to live in. Of course, the Civil War kind of has lingered on since those days. Another piece of legislation that McNutt signed was to create a university in Oxford, Mississippi, we now call Ole Miss. Did he live in this home until he died? No, he did not. He lived here until he became governor, and uh, then he moved to Jackson. But he moved to Jackson before they had the governor's mansion. In fact, he was the first governor to actually be in the old court, uh, the old Capitol. Capitol building that's located in Jackson. It's now a museum. So did he retain ownership of this house when he went to Jackson? No, he put the house up for sale and a, and a gentleman by the name of Wright, he was a banker out of New Orleans, he purchased the house and it stayed in their family up until 1966. There's some contention as to should it be the McNutt house or the Wright house given they had it for about 130 years. So it's the McNutt house. Well, it's That's on the National Register of Historic Places, a state and county historic landmark, and it's because of McNutt. Uh, what's your favorite feature of the house? <laughs> if you could pick just one. Completed projects. Anything that gets done on time or even gets done at all. It's a labor of love. A uh, 188 year old home requires continuous maintenance and uh, so there's this tremendous amount of effort that goes into trying to keep it and uh, bringing it back to its old glory. Well you've done a grand job. Is there anything else you'd like to show us in the house? Uh, show the gardens or well, you certainly you, like you certainly need to see the work that my wife does. She does all the gardening work and we're quite proud of her, her gardens. Well, let's go outside and take a look at the garden. Let's do that. So Elton, this house was here during the Civil War. What role did it play in the Civil War? It was a headquarters, wasn't it? Was it was a headquarters for the 8th Heavy Artillery Battalion out of Louisiana. And in fact, we have one of those families, one of those members of the unit still in here to this day, Lieutenant David Weeks McGill. There is actually a Confederate grave on, a, on the property. That's correct. Uh, as far as I know, it's the only Confederate grave or Union grave for that matter that's outside of the National Military Park or City let's Cemetery. Start. Let's take a look at the garden. Elvin, thank you for walking us through the, the tour of the McNutt House and, and through the garden. Uh, I understand your wife's roots run pretty deep here, that she's pretty much related to the founding fathers and mothers of the city. Yeah, it, it's, we started doing all this research on McNutt and her family kept interjecting about her family and we got to doing a little more research. Her three greats grandfather was John Klein. He built Cedar Grove. Her three greats grandmother was Emma Balfa. Everybody knows yeah. who she is. And uh, so many of the things that we have as far as um, historical items and everything else have been passed down through the family and we've been fortunate enough to, to receive a number of those that we're able to show to people. Well, we invite everyone to come take a look around because you have a really splendid collection of Vicksburg memorabilia and fine things in the house. And the yard is just spectacular. I know it's a labor of love and that you two never stop working. And we uh, thank you for what you do. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Bye. Good to see you. You bet. Our visit now is to the Joseph Bozinski House. It was built in the early 1860s. In the last couple of years, it's undergone an extensive renovation by the current owners, David Mitchell and Andrew Dawson. Come on, let's go inside and take a look at this remarkable renovation. First of all, the one architectural, architecturally unique feature of the house are these doors. And the doors, instead of being pocket doors like in many houses, obviously are hinge doors that 
fold open instead of sliding open. No one has been here and been able to say they've ever seen doors like these before anywhere else, so we feel certain they were custom made just for this space, maybe a unique original design. And the most fascinating part, I believe, is that the surface of the doors, we have come to believe, is completely covered in faux paint. That none of the wood grain that you see is natural wood grain, that it has all been painted on by hand so that it looks like burled walnut inset into the doors. built by Joseph Bozinski and his wife Adeline. Joseph Bozinski's initials are still in the medallion of the original Italian marble mantle. And like most in the historic homes of Vicksburg of the period, these fireplaces were created to burn coal. So when coal went out of fashion as a fuel, they became obsolete. They couldn't burn wood because they weren't deep enough, they weren't large enough, and many people converted them to gas heat. David, I've heard this urban legend that this house is sits on top of um, a chain of caves that connected to the courthouse and other places. And the urban uh, legend has it that the caves were filled with gold. Did you find any gold when you redid this place? We have not found any gold whatsoever. Oh, no, darn, we man. have found nothing of significant value to be able to sell to help pay the mortgage, but just the fine architectural pieces of the house itself. All of this space was a doctor's office and a medical clinic for most of the 20th century. And so our renovation included taking apart all of the medical clinic, removing the lowered ceilings, removing the dividing walls, and opening the house back up to its original floor plan. So when I met you guys, the, the, the whole renovation took about two and a half years, is that right? Or at least. It was at least, because mm -hmm. you went on, it went on for a long time. Right. Where you operate as a tour home by right. appointment, I believe, mm -hmm. and you also have a couple of bed and breakfast rooms, right? That's right. And we offer this downstairs for events, meetings of any kind, showers, weddings, receptions. Uh, I know you're in love with your doors, your parlor doors. Is, right. there, is there another feature of the house that just knocked you out when you started getting into it? The doors, I tell you, every time I walk up to the front door and look at the millwork that surrounds it, I'm just awed by the idea that we actually own that. It's just fascinating to see the craftsmanship and the detail work and just the space, the cubic square footage of the house. I know you're a visionary in many ways, but when you looked at this space and thought of your things and your grandmother's things and all the things that you'd be bringing into the house, did you see it as it is today? Or did you walk no. in here one day and go, oh my God, I live here? Well, I didn't ever see it in this way. Everything sort of fell into place one day at a time, one piece at a time. And it just is what it is. There was nothing purchased specifically for this house or specifically for a place in this house and there's a lot of just a lot of stuff a lot of eclectic stuff and it wasn't meant to be eclectic it's just what we had and, your own. and what we brought in here and everything has a story uh, it's very obvious that no professional has been in here to decorate the space that it's just a wild collection of of what we've collected. We're hoarders with a lot of square footage, is the way I like to say it. Well, it works. It all works together. <laughs> Thank you. Do uh, we want to walk us through some of the house and okay. kind of show us some more of it? Although from the outside, this space looks like it was an addition, and most people ask, so you all added all of this part on. It's not. These are the original exterior porches that we chose to close in with glass to create hallways down this wing of the house. Otherwise, the only way to get from one end of this wing to the other was to go through every single room. And so closing in the exterior porches with glass created these hallways. The grandson of the couple who built the house 
Nathan Lewis was a doctor and he inherited the house from an aunt who said that you could inherit the house as long as you turned it into a hospital. Well, he couldn't turn it into a hospital, but he and his wife, who was his nurse, turned it into a medical clinic and turned the upstairs into their private residence. In order to get from downstairs to the upstairs, they installed this elevator, which was on their exterior porch. And so they would come up on the outside porch to go into their elevator to take them upstairs to get out on the porch to go into their apartment. And what I find most interesting about it is in putting in this elevator, they closed off two interior doors that could have served as the doors to the elevator and open to the interior, but they obviously wanted it to open to the outside. Well, now let's go out to the balcony. We'll show you the front view. And this is our balcony view. David, thank you for letting us visit the Mazinski house today. Uh, I know you do weddings and special events. You've got a big class reunion coming up this weekend. You do bed and breakfast. And the, uh, the home tours are by appointment. Is that correct? You just need to call the main number and make an appointment to come in? That's right. We're always here. We live here. We're available for anybody and everybody at all times. So just well, let us know when you're ready. Your renovation is spectacular. I think in your original promotional pieces, you. Uh, used something like this is not your mamma's antebellum house. It's <laughs> That's certainly right. not your mamma's antebellum <laughs> house. It's really a, spin a splendid blend of old and new. And we thank, thank you, you for letting us visit with you today. Thank well, you. We appreciate your being here. Thank you. Thanks for all you do.